Hawaii has changed drastically in the last hundred years. For many, it's just a place to visit, but for us who live in Hawaii, it's our home. When I speak of home, it's not your house, but a special way of life that's rich in culture and history. From the beginning, there was nothing here. It was just ocean. Millions of years ago, the, the islands rose from the ocean floor due to volcanism. So at one point in time, there was only lava here. Hawaiian Islands are, you know, one of the most isolated places on Earth. 2,000 miles away from any other landmass. What was here was only what was carried by the wind currents or by birds or the ocean currents. The first people to come to Hawaii were my ancestors, the Polynesians. We know of uh, just fragments of a uh, a very rich uh, voyaging past. The ancient Polynesians voyaged on uh, double hull canoes, and they needed to explore, and they needed to sail in order to survive and spread their culture. And that's why, in some respects, Hawaiians today owe their existence to the voyaging canoe. It embodies all the skill and the knowledge and the courage that went with those really uh, special people who were able to traverse 1,000 mile, 2,000 mile, 3,000 mile voyages back over 1,600 years ago. Kiyo-wo, 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 Pa'apono i ke kaulaka ili-ili-la, Pukio-wo, Pukio-wo, Kauo, uo, uo, awe, Koa-wo, Koa-wo, Canoes and voyaging were central to the survival of the ancient Polynesians, and we need to learn from our history if our culture is to survive. That's why we are building and sailing ocean-going canoes in the traditional ways of our ancestors. As far as I can remember, being raised by my grandparents, uh, it's all they were talked about, as far as where we came from, how we got here in the canoes. There's still stories within the family that talk about our families coming from the South Pacific to these islands. Up until the late 1800s, they were still sailing, and not too many people know that. When I first seen Okoleo, it's like um, a dream come true. Okoleo is a replica of an ancient voyaging canoe. She was built so we could learn firsthand about traditional Polynesian sailing and navigation. We sailed Hokulea more than 35,000 nautical miles throughout the major island groups of Polynesia. The experience of Hokulea has really provided the opportunity for the crew members in Hawaii to go out and sail in the wake of their ancestors. She started out as a research project to answer questions about our past 
she went way beyond that. Sailing on Okalea, you could slice through layers of time and look back at who your ancestors were. Okalea helped us to retrace the epic ocean voyages of our ancestors, but she was made mostly out of modern materials. Her hulls are made out of fiberglass, not out of wood, like the ancient canoes. Now, to experience even more of our culture, we want to build a canoe out of the same materials our ancestors used. Building the original double hull canoe without like modern tools or nails, you know, using raffia to tie everything together, that's part of our identity, that's part of the culture. And once you lose something like that, just as simple as a canoe or something, you know, or once you, you ignore something like that, you start ignoring everything else and then you start forgetting who you are and where you come from and who your people are. And once that happens, then away. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. You die, your people die. With the new canoe project, we're facing the same challenge as our ancestors, finding a balance between human needs and the limited resources of the natural environment. The first step was to search our coal force for trees large enough to build the hulls of a voyaging canoe. The Kilauea Forest Reserve is only six square miles, and it's one of the few areas that has neither been ranched for cattle or been logged. Okay. Enough will get cardio. About hundred cardio for each other. Yeah. Yep. All right. The opportunity to go into the coal force was really a privilege. It was like we were stepping into the footsteps of our ancestors. This was a place that was their domain. must have existed in the past, but they don't now. We had been searching on the weekends for nearly nine months to find the trees of a sufficient size. The longer we looked, the more disappointing it became. Sit down in the valley a bit. You know, my experience uh, within the core force has been, has uh, really opened my eyes to the fact that it's man that created the depletion of the core. And that uh, there really is no excuse. There is no excuse for the, the taking of such, of really the whole forest. Hawaii. If you imagine this island is nearly a million years old, the core forest in that time took hundreds of thousands of years to evolve, and yet within the 100 years, we knocked it down to about 10%. In the past, core or other natural resources weren't seen as being a commodity, something that you had to get rid of so that you could raise cattle. Today is obviously not the same as in the past. I mean, we ship in 95% of all that we consume from elsewhere in the world. We don't see the need to conserve because we can get things elsewhere. When the Westerners had come to Hawaii, they had brought an awful lot of different things. 
One is they brought in diseases that the Hawaiian people weren't resilient against. The Hawaiians not only lost their population, really, but also their value systems were displaced, as well as their whole traditional system of survival, because now it became a money economy, which it knew nothing about. The effects on the canoe project are real simple. You can't build a canoe out of the native materials in Hawaii alone because it's just not here anymore. We needed to look elsewhere to find logs to continue our project. Just as you people have a rich heritage and a rich culture, so do we in Hawaii. Where we come from, as well as you come from, we come from a proud race and a proud people. The Native Hawaiian Culture and Arts Program is going to try to build a canoe out of traditional materials and then actually sail it over a traditional migratory route. In the last nine months, we have searching our forest to get the trees for our canoes and we couldn't find any. We needed to look elsewhere. Historically, there was another source of logs that were big enough to build the ancient voyaging canoes. In the 18th century, there was an explorer that had come to Hawaii, his name was Captain George Vancouver. When he came to Hawaii, he saw a canoe, a voyaging canoe sailing between our island groups. He followed the canoe to one of the islands and he asked the chief, where is the origin of this canoe? Because it was the finest, without any exception, of any canoe that they had seen in Hawaii. The chief's response to Captain Vancouver was that the trees for those logs had drifted over the ocean and they are a gift from the gods. But actually, the pine trees and the other trees that were drifted to Hawaii came from the Pacific Northwest. We are coming back here to ask you for a gift. We're coming back here to ask you for two of your trees so that we can continue to build our canoe, so that we can continue to perpetuate our culture. The reason we feel uh, we are connected with the Hawaiian people is uh, they, what they are doing is uh, they're keeping their culture going also, along with their language. And this is just uh, coincides with us. We are doing the same things here in Alaska, our people. We're trying to keep our traditional language and the cultures, our songs, we don't want them ever to die. The whole experience with the Clinket and the Haida Indians, it's very enriching. They really are ocean people with great ocean traditions. Their survival depended on canoes also. And the language is different, their dances are different. Besides the canoes, they're carving a wood and symbolic artifacts are different than Hawaii. But the basic survival seems to be the same. All of us are struggling to emerge into the modern world and survive in the modern world and maintain our traditions as the foundation for ourselves. It's all the same. 
Ashikinya, Ain Haneste, Kwan, Tatin Dane Hajite, Hatu Wuyes, Tiaku Kuto, Tatin Dudite. We thank you, trees in Slinget Asquani, and the tree that we are going to use today. That we look at you is in a symbol of strength and power. And that you would hold up in the storms and in the weathers to come. And that it would be a blessing to the Hawaiian nation. The Alaskan Indians and the Hawaiians are really sharing traditions because we both had traditions of ceremonies that related to cutting down trees. Both cultures had tremendous respect for the resources and the environment they lived in. These ceremonies were for really asking forgiveness for taking a living thing from the domain of the forest. The ancient people took the time and they took the energy to have these ceremonies because the ceremonies are based on wisdom. You have to have respect for your natural environment. In contrast to bringing a bulldozer in and knocking down the whole forest so you can throw some cattle in there. I felt real conflicted when we cut the street down because we're cutting something down that was so magnificent. And it was really majestic, a 200 plus foot living tree that was over 400 years old. European explorers, is, they, they did describe it as pine. Mm. But I'm not sure if they didn't know what the actual species was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's the, the canoe is going to carry the spirit of a people, the pride and the honor and the dignity of an ocean-going people, whether they're Polynesians, Hawaiians, or Alaskans. We now have the responsibility to do something important with that wood. project for me, you know. I usually build racing canoes and the log is maybe a three foot in diameter. And this is six foot. I'm scared. I know I can do it, but you know, it's, it's twice, uh, maybe four times as big a project that I ever did. We went to Alaska and we brought these trees home. I think if you ask the crew members now, after they've had time to think about it, they wouldn't want to build a canoe on a coal because there's so little quality coal left that the trees are more important to be left alone. That precious gift from the Southeast Alaskan Indians has been greatly appreciated because we can carry on our project without taking away from an ailing environment.
we've witnessed the problems in our coal environment. We're faced with the fact that we need to do something about it, and our mission has changed. It's not to find coal trees, but to replant them. When we came through that last white gate, we entered a thousand acres of reforestation. In order for the trees to get that size and the forest to start rejuvenating itself, we have to come in and prepare the ground the way you see it now. The area does look devastated, but that's what's required in order to get the core seeds to germinate. With these seedlings, we want to interplant wherever, whatever areas you find that are void of natural regrowth. And you want, we want to plant them approximately five feet apart. Hey. Today, we need to recognize that poor decisions were made in the past in terms of the management of our environment as a whole. We need to face up to the realities of how much has been destroyed, take an honest look at our environment that we call home, and then make better decisions as to how we can make our home better. I'm still surprised myself that uh, the progress that we have done. We have only been working on Saturdays for seven months. And this is what you see from a, a log. I actually took on the job with just three men. And uh, I was fortunate enough to get a kind of qualified crew. Now there are volunteers up to nine, between nine and 15 men. I was always involved uh, since I was probably 12 years old with canoeing. In fact, my father used to be a canoe builder and not actually a builder, but he would repair canoes in Kona and in Hilo. And so it's just a natural thing for me to do. As I was growing up, I realized that, you know, the culture, the Hawaiian culture was dying and diminishing. It didn't make, it doesn't make sense to Hawaiian people that, you know, others can come in and, and tell us what to do in our, our own home, you know. So it really hurt and I really wanted to, to get into Hawaiian language and to my Hawaiian culture through singing our music and um, chants and dancing and just to keep it alive. The new project may only be a vehicle to help us better understand what our future challenges are. The greatest challenge our generation faces is to provide our future generations with a quality place to live. And in order to do that, we need to learn what are the limits of the natural environment, to discipline ourselves to live within these limits, and then to make a firm commitment to take care of our home.